Right, welcome back guys. Um, sorry I ain't done a video for a while. I have been meaning to, and I, um, because I've been recording on my phone because I haven't yet got a camera. I, with my other phone, it's not letting me upload files onto computer, so I've just had to wait till I get a new phone, and also I'm recording this now for you. And hopefully it'll be a bit better quality as well, because it's an iPhone 8 Plus this time, I only had a small one before. Um, don't worry about cameras, I'm definitely going to get one soon. Um, but I'm just waiting until I've got a bit, bit of money behind, behind me for the channel really, I don't want to be digging into money that I'm using on a daily basis for other things, <coughs> obviously because I'm not getting loads of attention yet on here, so I'd like to get a bit more attention before I start spending money on the channel. Um, but yeah, this video is just going to be about 5,000 miles in me Audi RS3 because I've just hit that um, a couple of days ago. Got 5,090 miles now, so yeah, we'll do a video about that. Hopefully, it'll help you out. And obviously, if you're looking to buy one, you'll obviously know what it's like after obviously 5,000 miles. Um, but yeah, overall, my opinion had changed on it. Um, but I'll obviously get into separate points in this video about what has got better, maybe what I think is the best part of the car, what still. Um, I don't like about too much, maybe. But overall, it's mostly positive. So, we'll start with the... Uh, um, start with the bad things at first, which I'm saying bad things, but not really bad things. Most of the things is what you expect anyway from an RS3. Um, obviously, like I said before, the attention that it gets sometimes is quite negative people start to dislike you because of it, some people start to threat, threaten you that you're going to nick your car, things like that. But obviously on this point too long it's a bit of a, a, bit of a boring point. Um, so yeah, second point is obviously fuel. Everyone knows that RS3s use a lot of fuel. Some people own faster cars, but, well obviously not just faster, if they've got a bigger engine than an RS3 they might use a bit more fuel than me, so it might be a bit like thinking what you're on about, they use a lot of fuel, they don't really use any. But obviously for me, it's quite quite a bit compared to what I used to have in the 1.6 turbo with me, Fiesta ST. So yeah, overall I've been doing about 17 miles a gallon on average, but I have been driving fast. I've always been on an accelerator quite hard most of the time. Um, you, sp you use a lot of your fuel by dropping it down a gear, putting your foot down, braking, dropping it down another gear, same all the time, that's all I ever do, is just sucking over the pops of my bands, but I never stop, I never learn. <laughs> um, another point about the disadvantages is really hard to think of, to be fair, because like I said, I absolutely love the car, I can't really think of any disadvantages it's got. Obviously the monthly payments, the cost of a car is quite steep. <laughs> For some people, don't get me wrong, it might not be, but for me it's, it's not the cheapest car ever so obviously but you obviously expect all these things when you buy it you think about what how much it's going to cost you think about if you've got enough money before you buy it so obviously i've done that and i've done my research before i buy it and obviously i know everything before i bought it anyway so i'm not that disappointed about them points another point is about the oil um i have been told and i'm aware from other videos that these cars tend to use quite a lot of oil when brand new I didn't think it was going to use as much as it did, um, about 4,500, 4,700 miles kind of kind of area, it um, needed filling up, so when I was on the road, the light came on and I had to go to a nearest Saudi dealership because I had no idea what I was doing, um, but when I went to the Audi dealership, which was the Harrogate one, so I'll call, that day I was calling it Redline Specialist Cars and I've heard of them. If you watch all the big YouTubers, you'll probably heard of them. So I'll go in there in Arrogate and Arrogate was the closest uh, dealership I was to when I, when obviously the light came on, so I just went straight there just in case. So well, I didn't want to do any damage to the car or anything like that. So I went there, Arrogate dealership said I should have got a free bottle when I purchased the car. So when I picked it up, I should have had a free bottle in there. Sorry, it was a dickhead in my way. Um, so when I purchased a car, I should have had a free bottle in my boot. Like a one litre bottle. 
Ross, but I never had one in my boots. I rang um, Wakefield and I ended up getting a free bottle sorted anyway. Me and Phil being windscreen wipers up from before, free without even telling him, so that's obviously an added bonus. Um, so I'm too lazy to do that. So that's another point. And yesterday, in fact, I'll, I'll tell you about this one while I'm on. Um, the tyre pressure monitor came up as though I lost pressure on my front right tyre. Obviously I've got a tyre pressure indicator on the or monitor on my car. I know my car, so it comes up on my dashboard and tells me tells me what pressure's in each tyre or what temperature each tyre each tyre is. So obviously when I've gone into that, it's perfect the, the pressure is perfect and exactly the same as the other the front left one, so I've got no idea why it's doing that, so it could be a fault with the sensor or whatever it is, I've got no idea but I'm going to have to ring Audi about that so that's obviously another another negative but things like this happen you can't get around them so I'm not too bothered it's not a major issue but apart from that I think that's the end of a negative comments I've got on the car let's go on to um, the fun part which is the positives so 5000 miles in the car sounding a lot better, a lot beefier, pops are a bit more loud. Um, definitely sounds better after you've put a few miles on it. But what I would say is definitely run it in. Don't obviously get on the gas fully straight away because it's not good. If you do, it's not going to run the car in, it's not going to run as well. Maybe it might break a bit of a few parts early, it might, well, whatever. You know what I mean? Everyone says it. Just make sure you run it in for the first thousand miles. That's probably the best kind of area for you. I don't know if you can hear that then, but it's, it's definitely um, definitely sounds well. 